What is up YouTube? It's your girl Evelyn and today I want to highlight some upcoming shows and films featuring queer lady characters. So sit back, enjoy the video, and if there are any upcoming shows or films I've missed, please let me know in the comments. That means girls get to ask the boys. Ooh, I don't know how to pull on my own toenails. <laughs> Everyone, this is Sydney. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi. This could be my chance to finally kiss a girl. Do you even know if she likes girls? Don't worry about it. Adapted from a short film of the same name, Aaron's Guide to Kissing Girls is an adorable looking teen rom-com about Aaron, a nerdy middle schooler who develops a crush on the super cool new girl at her school. Unfortunately, Aaron's crush soon comes between her and her best friend Liz, and with the end of middle school closing in, can Aaron get the girl, keep her best friend, and maybe even learn a thing or two about kissing? Aaron's Guide to Kissing Girls premieres February 3rd on VOD. Now you need a boss chick. Real niggas gon' pay one I found someone that I feel great about. How many orgasms does she give you? I lost count after eight. Do oh. <laughs> not get sweat of yourself. Now these are adorable. That's not where those go. Harlem is a somewhat wacky comedy about four friends attempting to follow their dreams in New York. And it's basically girlfriends meets sex in the city with a dash of girls trip thrown in. And despite its weirdly skewed audience ratings, Harlem is clearly doing something right since it's landed itself a second season, which is awesome because half of Harlem's main characters are queer and their romantic relationships are given just as much screen time as those of the non-queer characters. So if you're looking for a fun, lighthearted, and surprisingly show, you can catch up with Harlem's fabulous friend group February 3rd on Amazon Prime. They Wait in the Dark is an indie revenge slash supernatural thriller about a woman who takes her young son on the run to escape an abusive ex. Also, there are ghosts. The trailer for this film definitely gives me high tension vibes, but that's probably just because the ex also has short blonde hair and likes to hang out in gas stations. Practically the same thing. Also, apparently this film has a twist ending, and you guys know, your girl loves a good twist ending. Unfortunately, most twist endings aren't good, but from what I've read about this one, it actually is. So if you have a thing for bleak, distressing, and violent films, like I do, get professional help. You can watch They Wait in the Dark February 7th on VOD. What is so big, word, Lord. Mercy. Everyone's favorite Gotham City girlfriends are back. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. That's right, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy have gifted us with a super sexual and apparently very problematic Valentine's Day special. Wow. Whoa. What the hell? They're doing it in the street like animals. Harley. Oh, you can't possibly be mad at me for getting you off too good. That is not a thing. Even though I might be the only person on the internet who didn't love Harley Quinn's third season, I am still ridiculously excited for what promises to be a very raunchy special episode. Now, if you've never watched Harley Quinn, this might not be the best episode to start with, but with rumors that season four will be dropping later this year, now is the perfect time to catch up. And once you do, be sure to tune in on February 9th to catch Harley Quinn, a very problematic Valentine's Day special on HBO Max. In the back of my mind. Yeah. Attachment is a critically acclaimed Shudder original that's part comedy, part romance, and a whole lot of horror. Maja is a former actress who falls in love with Leah, a younger woman who happens to be a Jewish academic from the UK. After Leah suffers a mysterious seizure, Maja accompanies her back to London and to her overbearing and secretive mother. It's not Jewish superstition, can't leave a book open or like a demon might read it and learn from it and use the knowledge for evil. I have to admit, I'm already a little in love with this movie. I love the premise, I love that it's steeped in Jewish folklore, and I love that it's essentially a hodgepodge of film genres that typically don't go together. Also, quick shout out to my girl, Ellie Kendrick, who played Brand's homie Mira on Game of Thrones. You can watch Attachment February 9th on Shudder. Coming 
Out for Love is the first women-loving women U.S. reality dating show that gives 16 single ladies a chance to compete for the love of this season's sexy queer single, Amber Whittington. We're in Palm Springs, California to bring you a groundbreaking new dating competition show. We have one LGBTQ lead and 16 women who love women, all staying together under one roof. Now, given that the last reality dating show I watched was I Love New York, I have no idea what makes a good reality dating show. Oh, uh, that seems about right. I also love that the show was set in Palm Springs because, of course it is. Coming Out for Love is the brainchild of filmmaker Nicole Kahn, best known for Elena Undone and Claire of the Moon. Also, professional lesbian Christmas movie maker Kristen Baker is co-directing. Fake. The first two episodes of Coming Out for Love premiere February 14th on lesflix.com. Planet Sex is a six episode docuseries hosted by Cara Delevingne and centers around all things sex. Now, if you'll recall, I covered this show back in November because that's when it was supposed to come out, but it didn't. So here we go again. But this is the first time I've spoken about my sex life. So let's talk about it. I'm going to travel the world to discover what makes each of us who we are. I love men, but oh, I love women. Now, Planet Sex was released in the UK back in December, so if you've already watched it, make sure to drop a quick review in the comments for me. I will say the show definitely looks interesting, with the first season covering a porn library, a master seminar and a ladies only sex party. You can catch the premiere of Planet Sex February 14th on Hulu. Alison Brie is back at it again doing what she does best, kissing women on screen for sport. No shade! Somebody I Used to Know is most likely a very straight film about a woman who runs into her ex-boyfriend while visiting her hometown. And after spending some time with both him and his super hot fiance, she begins to develop complicated feelings for both of them. If my being here is making you uncomfortable- No, then, no. It wouldn't be very cool of me to kick out one of Sean's oldest friends. Somebody I Used to Know claims to be an unconventional love story about three people. And maybe it is. But I can't help feeling like the queerness in the trailer is a tad baity. Again, I could be wrong and this movie might be super gay. And if you want to find out for yourself, you can catch Somebody I Used to Know February 10th on Amazon Prime. Meu sonho é vir astrofísico e participar de uma missão Marte 1. É isso mesmo que você quer? Ir para Marte? É lindo. É um sonho lindo. Mars One is a gorgeous film that is a feast for both the eyes and the soul. And it tells the story of a working class black Brazilian family as they cope in the aftermath of the election of an extremist far right president. I have to say, it's been a very long time since I watched a film that I truly loved every second of. Mars One emotionally destroyed me, then gently put me back together. It made my jaw drop, it made my heart ache, and it did all of that with the simplest plot imaginable. Now, we can't forget the game because there is gay. In fact, a lot more than I expected. Like I said, this film centers on a family, one of whom, the daughter, is gay. And we get to see her fall in love with another girl who is of a higher socioeconomic class. Although I have to admit, I definitely prejudged what I thought was gonna happen with her storyline, and I am so happy I was so wrong. I could make an entire video about Mars One, that's how much I loved it, but I don't wanna spoil it for those of you who haven't watched it yet. But every scene in this film is infused with warmth, every shot of Brazil is absolutely stunning, and the mother storyline still makes me tear up when I think about it. Do yourself a favor, and if you haven't watched Mars One, Watch Mars One. In my opinion, it is what storytelling and filmmaking should be. It is what art and filmmaking should be. And I really hope it wins the Oscar for best international film this year because it deserves to. That is it for the video. I want to give a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Miss Z and Vey. I also have to shout out my big spender patrons, Angel, Citizen Ruth, Mary, Angie, JC, Lucia, and Robert. Hey! 
And just to let you guys know, I recently uploaded a Gen Q full season three review podcast over on Patreon. So if you want to come and commiserate with us, feel free to join. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to let me know which show or film you're most looking forward to and I'll see you in the next one.